Let's run an experiment. Normally, science is a methodology that adheres to rigorous quality standards, stringent controls, and a strong ethical framework. This ensures reliability, integrity, and objectivity in the pursuit of knowledge. But what happens when we mix Marxist doctrine and communist political tactics with science? I mean, if these two forces can corrupt political science, can they also corrupt other types of science? Let's find out. So let's do an experiment and see just what happens when we apply Marxist doctrine and communist political tactics to climate science. By doing this experiment, you'll start to see climate alarmism in a new light. Technique number one, use peer pressure Pretend to have a consensus. Act like there's unanimous agreement. Everyone believes what the party believes, comrade. Everyone believes man is driving climate change. Number two, use class struggle. Put people into two camps. They are either the victim or the oppressor, either those helping the environment or those against the environment. Number three, control the language and image. Control the words being used so people who embrace the climate emergency line are called scientists, experts, environmentalists, heroes, authorities, and concerned citizens. Loyal party members must be seen as champions of justice, fighting for the poor, fighting for the oppressed, helping the environment, helping the minorities, and protecting the earth. But for those against the party line, use words like deniers, skeptics, ignorant, polluters, detractors, selfish, corrupt, or paid shills of the oil companies. Proclaim that they're against the poor, they're against the oppressed and the environment. Say that they disregard nature and are profiting off the destruction of our planet. Number four, dealing with the opposition. Demonize and move against the non-believers. Convince the public that everyone who disagrees with the man-made climate emergency is evil. Therefore, these evil people must be fired, canceled, punished, silenced, discredited, vilified, publicly shamed, and re-educated. But, Pretend that everything the opposition mentioned has already been thoroughly investigated, comprehensively scrutinized, and painstakingly studied by qualified experts who debunked these naysayers. Technique number five, control the information. The party needs to seize control of scientific agencies, publications, journals, and authorities, so we can suppress and forbid opposing viewpoints. Use censorship on dissenting perspectives, but do it subtly. Don't call it censorship. Make it appear that these actions are only done for purely scientific, moral, and just reasons, like stopping misinformation and safeguarding scientific credibility. Now, these agencies we control must only give rewards, honors, grants, and recognitions 
to those who tow the man-made climate catastrophe narrative. Then we can claim that all the experts are on our side. It may be hard, but you must ignore the thousands of factors that affect the climate and blame everything on mankind. And don't let anyone confront you that wasting trillions of dollars to change the climate won't make any difference. Technique number six, financial manipulation. Ensure that all financial backing for studies, grants, and research must conform to the predefined conclusions of the climate emergency narrative, otherwise be defunded and discredited. Number seven, debates. Avoid and discourage debates because people might hear non-conforming viewpoints and our Armageddon narrative might get blown to pieces. But again, pretend that all scientific discussion, inquiry, and debate has already been carefully examined, considered, and thoroughly analyzed by experts. Use terms like settled science and the debate is over to stop dissent. Technique number eight, control the history. Historical data must be rewritten and altered to conform to the party's climate emergency doctrine. Make temperatures of the past look colder and temperatures of today look extremely hot with record-setting heat. But don't let the people know this. Do it subtly. Just claim that you're recalibrating past measurements for higher scientific accuracy. Technique number nine, indoctrinating the youth. The ideology of climate emergency must be programmed into the youth, barring any exposure to contrary perspectives. The front lines of the climate movement must be zealous youth. These useful idiots should be whipped into a frenzy, urgently pushing our agenda. They must be willing to do anything we tell them because, hey, we're saving the planet. Technique number 10, use fear to control people. Keep crying wolf, wolf, to maintain a continual state of alarm and emergency, scaring people into submission. Use phrases like catastrophic, record setting, apocalypse, irreversible, past the tipping point and past the point of no return. Blame everything bad on climate change, from minor inconveniences to major societal problems. This will put fear in the public and convince them that we need to take drastic measures now. But don't let anyone remind you of all our failed predictions of doom. Technique Number 11, communist methodology. The ends justify the means. Since the party is always correct and working for what's most important, it is okay if we lie, deceive, cheat, and use nefarious means to arrive at our goals. That's just moral relativism but uh, don't let the public know about this deception. And for every mischievous thing we do to promote our agenda, just say that the opposition is doing that. Technique number 12, the ultimate goal. Remember, it's all about power. 
our ultimate purpose is simply to gain wealth and power. Therefore, convince the public that the solution to every problem is centralizing all power in the hands of the wise, educated, ruling class elite. Then we can regulate everything. The power must not reside with the riffraff, commoners, or peasants. It must be taken away from them for their own good. Remember, even science is for the advancement of our power and wealth, not for the advancement of the environment. But to the public, it must appear that everything is done to protect the environment. In conclusion of our little experiment, we've seen that mixing Marxism and communist political tactics would absolutely ruin science. But to varying degrees, these have been the tactics of the climate alarmists for the past 30 years. The same idiotic philosophy and brute tactics that have infected the governments of so many Marxist countries is now operating under the disguise of climate alarmism. It's just like how so many Marxist leaders who in their earlier years were talking about helping the poor and fighting for the oppressed only to get in power, become dictators, and show their true colors. Now you're starting to see climate hysteria in a new light. Many people suspected something was off with the climate alarmist movement, but we just couldn't put our finger on it. We assumed that they're trying their best. This is why climate alarmists are closely associated with the left, socialists, globalists, and Marxists. This is why so many elites and officials are jetting around the world, pretending to save humanity, pretending to save the planet. At this point, you can't argue or have meaningful discussions with them. They're as trustworthy as a tabloid and as honest as a Chinese propaganda minister. All the facts and studies they recite have been tainted by these corrupt tactics that were shown in this video. Arguing with them is like arguing the merits of freedom with a Chinese communist leader. To the elite, they just don't care. It's all about power. And to the useful idiots, multitudes have been indoctrinated from this corrupt group, convinced that they're saving the planet. Well, it's time to take the red pill. The public has been fooled into believing that these climate alarmists were upright and adhered to the highest standards of quality and stringent rules of scientific excellence. But they weren't. Parts of the environmental movement were hijacked early on by people with ulterior motives. The climate debate hasn't been a clash of science and research. It's been a clash of ideologies. So what's the solution? At this point, the only solution to this problem is to get into positions of power and fire these Marxists from every government position, agency, and board, and cut off their public funding. Let's use the trillions of dollars, yes, trillions of dollars, they've wasted on trying to change the climate and do something that actually benefits the environment. Hey, if they want to promote their nonsense with their own money, go right ahead. If they want to move to the jungle, 
live off the land and eat bugs. Go right ahead. If they want to depopulate and not have children and stop using everything that comes from oil, gas, and coal, go right ahead. But don't ever mix your Marxist doctrine and your communist political tactics with science again. No, Chicken Little, the sky is not falling. So stop pushing your climate hysteria nonsense on the rest of mankind. <laughs>